Hello friends. Before learning how chefs prepare red grouper into wonderful dishes like sashimi, let's learn about red grouper nutrition. Red grouper emerges as a silent sentinel of the ocean, captivating both fishermen and marine enthusiasts. As the fiery sun sank below the horizon, staining the calm sea in crimson and gold, a majestic presence lurked beneath the deep blue abyss. With vibrant colors reminiscent of a painter's palette, the red grouper emerges as a majestic presence. Red grouper, also known as Ephelus morio, is a species of fish in the Sirenidae family. This family also includes sea bass and several other species of grouper. It is distinguished by its orange-red appearance, accompanied by pink and brown stripes, sometimes accompanied by prominent black patterns on the body. You have a good chance of seeing red grouper in the warm tropical and subtropical waters of the Western Atlantic. These waters can be found anywhere from the Gulf of Mexico to the coast of Brazil. Then let's work with Japan's top chefs to create super delicious dishes with red grouper. Grouper sashimi is almost non-existent in the US, and for good reasons. There are very few species available for sushi applications because many species are known to carry parasites, as a result, chefs avoid using them. However, scamp is one of the the few groupers we raise that is highly regarded for its high meat quality. The silky and delicate texture of the fillets really sets them apart from the pack. When eaten raw, the meat is especially tender and smooth, almost like yellowtails. Napa. Additionally, in my experience, scamps are not known to show signs of parasites. Scamps are a lean fish and do not benefit from grilling because there is no oil to create a complex flavor. The best way is to simply serve it. it as sashimi or sashimi. I like mine with ponzo sauce instead of soy sauce. I find the slightly sweet and sour taste of the sauce adds to the flavor. Should I be worried about parasites in grouper? In my personal experience, I have never discovered a worm. in any scamp I have worked with. This includes fish of various sizes and caught from various depths out of the Gulf of Mexico. This is really strange because scamps live in the same area as other groups of groupers but somehow they avoid being infected. Perhaps they have evolved Evolved at a faster rate than other group of species and have developed better immune systems to fight worms. I can't say the same for scammers fishing from other regions or states. It might be a different story there, so always check the grouper before eating it raw. Sashimi is the best eating grouper we have had in the Gulf. Nice clean meat. Additionally, the cooked product is superior to gags or reds. 
Why is bleeding fish important for sushi? Grouper should be avoided when eating sashimi. The two The most common commercially harvested group of species in the southeast are gags and reds, and both are notorious for having worms. Gag, groupers are excellent fish eaters but can carry worms, although not to the same extent as red groupers. I recommend avoiding making sushi with this unless it is frozen first. Red grouper is famous for its worms. Over the years, I don't think I've ever cleaned a red that didn't get infected. For some biological reason, they are more susceptible to parasites. Although they are delicious when cooked, they are almost impossible to use to make sashimi. The good news is that the parasite is almost indistinguishable from white meat once cooked, so this is still a very marketable fish. By the way, there is no harm in eating fish with parasites once thoroughly cooked, it is completely safe. Read more here. Red grouper fillets often have deep marks like in the photo. Grouper fish suffer from several types of parasites, including trematodes, flatworms slash trematodes, cestodes, tapeworms, and nematodes, roundworms. Grouper worm parasite. This was also taken from a red grouper. The cavity is filled with anisakis, a type of roundworm. Anisakis is famous for being the main culprit in illnesses associated with eating raw fish. The parasitic red grouper anisakis. This is a typical situation. situation in the cavity of red grouper with anisakis, nematode. But they may not always be present in the flesh. In addition to scamps, red grouper or rock grouper, also known as strawberry grouper, are also excellent. Both of these group species are smaller in size, it is rare to catch one longer than 12 inches. They are also less likely to carry worms and have a similar texture and consistency to scamps. So try this if scamps is not available. Good luck!
About 200 different species of moray eels exist worldwide. Of these four different species will be found diving in the south of the Canary Islands. Seeing a moray eel with its mysterious eyes and gaping mouth can be scary, but in the canaries they pose no threat to scuba divers. Muranini species have a dorsal fin located near the gill slit, and running along the eel's back, while the anal fin is located behind the anus. Europterygiani has both a dorsal and anal fin located at the end of the tail. In the Canary Islands, the most common moray fish belongs to the subfamily Muranini. They have a dorsal fin that extends from just behind the head along the back and connects to the caudal and anal fins. Some people even believe that it has more in common with snakes than eels. The distinguishing feature of moray eels is their jaws. The moray's jaw is located further back in the head and closely resembles the oral jaw. When feeding, moray fish project these jaws into the oral cavity, where they grasp prey and transport it into the throat. Moray eels have unique slime, so first prepare the slime to wash it off. Scrub with a brush while looking at the salt. The moray eel is a fish that, due to its elongated shape, together with the conga eel and the eel, belongs to the group of angyliforms. Collagen is a nutrient that can be expected to have a beautiful skin effect. It has a great nutritional value in omega-3 fatty acids and B vitamins. The Romans considered it a great delicacy and served it at their lavish banquets. Compared to fish such as salmon and Pacific sorry, which are often found on the table, moray eels are not so familiar. It looks a little scary, but did you know that it's actually nutritious? Its flesh is white and gelatinous, although due to its large number of thorns, many people believe that it only serves to make fish broths. However, you can make delicious dishes such as, fried brunette, marinated, with honeyed rice or stews. Moray are opportunistic, carnivorous predators and feed mainly on smaller fish, crabs and octopuses. Groupers, barracudas, and sea snakes are among the few known predators making many moray species apex predators in their ecosystems. The size, color pattern and habitat of moray eels depend on the species. Most moray eels in the southern Canary Islands you will find in places with a combination of good hunting grounds and sufficient protection. You find them on many volcanic rock formations, artificial reefs such as shipwrecks as well as on any debris they can use as a hiding place. First, cut off the fins and bones at the base. Next, divide the abdomen along the midbone. If you damage your internal organs at this time, it will smell bad, so be careful. The spine of the moray eel has a bulge, so the trick is to run the knife along this bulge. Cut the middle bone from head to tail with the middle bone by using a knife along the middle bone. At this time, the upper body part of the abdomen is complete. Be careful with the small bones of the moray eel. There are countless small bones on the back of the moray eel. Small bones are sharp and hard so they need to be removed. Remove exposed bone from the body's surface by scraping a thin layer with a kitchen knife. Larger bones should be removed with tweezers. Cut the fillet into pieces. You need a knife with a razor blade as the skin is difficult to cut all the way through. The moray is then ready to be cooked, in this case a traditional Japanese nitsu, braised slash stewed in soy sauce and sake. The moray pieces are placed in the pan and covered with a portion of sake, a little mirin, sweet cooking wine, 
and a little dashi broth, if you cook regular nit soup with a whole fish, you don't need to add broth, and season it. With soy sauce and bring to a boil. You just need to add a few drops of soy sauce and the mixture will reduce by about one tenth of its original volume, any longer and it will be too salty. I also like to add some peeled ginger. Once the stew has reduced a bit, you can add little things for variety, here I added some green manganji peppers, like a Japanese version of pimien tosta padron, but in Japan almost anything can be added like daikon radish, tofu, gobo, Japanese burdock root, ban, onions, anything that can absorb a little. Off sweet stewed wine. Once the amount of water has reduced, you need to reduce the gas heat accordingly and cover the fish with a lid or a layer of tin foil, or use a traditional Japanese wooden lid to cover the inside of the pan, called otoshi buta. There are as many ways to make nitsuka as there are Japanese grandmothers and thus there is no right way to do it, but the orthodox way is for the fish to be kept moist with a lid and not heated too high to destroy the fish's aroma. And taste, not too long either. Some people add chopped ginger or green onions for decoration. One thing I definitely do, and many people don't, is add a soaking period. Once the dish was ready, I turned off the gas and covered it for about 10 minutes to cool a bit. The fish and vegetables themselves will absorb the cooking wine and have a much better color when cooled at about 60 degrees Celsius. Then I put it back on the fire and heated it to serving temperature. Here it is, Japanese style braised moray eel in soy sauce. Although it is a type of moray eel that is rarely sold nationwide, it is a fish that you can enjoy in many different flavors depending on the preparation method, such as fried chicken and kabayaki. Therefore, it is a popular ingredient in Kochi Prefecture, where it is produced to process moray eels at home is not easy, but when possible, you can eat them at home using your favorite recipe. The tricks of roasting, defatting and searing your skin are invaluable, as is the cooling time before serving. Of course, Japanese style has to do it justice. Other than that, the sky is the limit to get creative with it, papillot, fried, grilled, cataplana, sous vide, even smoked, one bite and you'll be hooked. Salmon, a versatile and readily available fish, is loaded with time-beneficial omega-3s, high-quality protein and rich micronutrient functions. Those interested in the nutritional profile of salmon should know that higher omega-3 intake is associated with a reduced risk of certain diseases such as cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's disease and other conditions. Firstly, 
While there are concerns about mercury and other toxic contaminants in fish, salmon is rich in nutrients with minimal toxins regardless of whether you buy farmed or wild caught fish. 2. Salmon has 121 calories, 17 grams protein, 5.4 grams fat, including beneficial omega-3 fatty acids and healthful polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats, and 37.4 mg sodium. There is no fiber, sugar or carbohydrates in salmon. The following nutrition information is provided by the United States Department of Agriculture for 3 ounces, 85 grams of raw, wild caught Atlantic salmon. 3. A 3 ounce serving of raw salmon, has 5.4 grams of fat. Of that, about 1.5 grams is from beneficial omega-3 fatty acids including EPA and DHA. Less than 1 gram comes from saturated fat. The fatty acid composition of salmon varies depending on whether it is farm-raised or wild-caught. Farmed salmon is often higher in fat, including saturated fat. Fish recover more comfortably. 4. There are 17 grams of protein in 3 ounces of wild-caught salmon fillet. Because farm-recovered fish has more fat, its mass contains slightly less protein. Regardless, salmon is an excellent source of high-quality complete protein, providing all the essential amino acids we require. Salmon provides vitamin A, and many B vitamins. It is one of the few natural food sources of vitamin D, wild salmon is a particularly good source. 5. Salmon is also rich in several minerals, including phenyl, potassium, phosphorus, zinc and selenium. In addition, canned salmon also contains a lot of calcium, due to its edible bones. A 3 ounce portion of salmon provides 121 calories, most of which come from protein. Some calories also come from healthy fats. Health Benefits of Salmon Fish has long been considered a health-promoting food. In particular, salmon is rich in nutrients. The American Heart Association recommends eating fish twice a week for good heart health. Six people who eat fish regularly are protected from many cardiovascular diseases. Only the three fats help prevent blood clots and reduce inflammation, a strong factor in the development of heart disease. Salmon is also a rich source of potassium, which helps reduce blood pressure. 7. Canned wild salmon is a good source of both vitamin D and calcium, two essential nutrients for bones. Although salmon also provides some vitamin D, the amount varies depending on the type of food used. Studies show that increasing vitamin D levels in farm-raised salmon will have a positive impact on human bone health. 5. Salmon's high protein content also contributes to bone health by supporting muscle strength. Salmon protein is made up of all amino acids, including those that serve as precursors to mood-regulating neurotransmitters. Fish consumption is associated with a reduced risk of depression. The omega-3 fats in salmon also benefit the brain and have been suggested in some studies to improve mood. 8. Omega-3 in salmon, especially DHA, is closely related to the development of the brain and nervous system of the fetus. Inadequate omega-3 supplementation during pregnancy and lactation has been shown to hinder the intellectual development of infants. 9. Salmon is lower in mercury than larger fish like steamed fish or swordfish, making it a better choice for those who want to eat fish during pregnancy. Some studies have found omega-3 has a protective effect against cognitive decline, such as Alzheimer's disease. 10. Although more research is needed to confirm this benefit, it appears that overall nutrients from whole foods provide cumulative effects that go beyond those of omega-3 supplements alone. Wild salmon gets its orange color from the antioxidant astaxanthin, a carotenoid with neuroprotective properties that works alongside omega-3s to slow brain aging. The services, including the salmon service, were potentially life-threatening due to the midfielder's insignificance. 12. Fish allergy is different from allergy to other types of seafood, such as shellfish. 
It is not surprising that the plague fish appeared later in poetry. If you are in doubt about responding to anise or other finned fish, see an allergist for a full evaluation and treatment plan.